Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment and this hour. Lord, we pray you transform everyone from weakness to strength in Jesus' name. From dryness to freshness in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray all those who have been defeated in the past, you transform them. They will kill every Goliath. They will subdue every opposition. And everyone will rise up in the strength of the Lord. And we will do great things in your mighty name. In Jesus name. Lord I pray. Every son here. Every daughter here. Every brother here. Every sister here. Every sincere member and minister of the church. Over here. Lord I pray. New strength. New anointing. A new power. A new authority. You give to everyone in Jesus' name. Transform us. Transform us. Oh Lord, transform us. That those of us who are weak in the past, we will no more be weak. That the strength of the Lord will carry us through in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. I pray, Lord, those who have never seen miracles before in their personal ministry, this year, they'll begin to see miracles. And those who have been fearful and frightened and afraid, oh Lord, I pray, from this very moment, the courage of a conqueror, the strength of a real soldier of Christ, you grant to everyone. You will not be weak again, you will be strong. And you'll go from victory to victory, from glory to glory, through your life in Jesus' name. Confirm it on everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. God bless you. You can see you are blessed already. We're looking at the message the transformed life. The transformed life in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 17. Here it tells us, it says, If therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. How many things? All things have become new. Thank God it has happened in your life. That, that's the life of a real child of God. We're looking at his ministry now. We're looking at chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 18. Second Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18. It tells us, but we all, how many of us? We all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed, are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us afresh, it says we're changed and we're transformed, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We're told in Job chapter 17 verse 9, the transformation takes place if we were strong before you're going to be stronger today and if your life was bright before you're going to be brighter today if you were fresh in the things of the Lord before you're going to be fresher today in Jesus name in Job chapter 17 verse 9 the righteous also shall hold on his way and he that has clean hands shall be shall be shall be stronger and stronger we are strong. We are going to become stronger. The things that used to put your back to the wall and the things that used to discourage you and the things that used to weaken you they are not going to weaken you anymore because you are going to be stronger and stronger. First Chronicles chapter 11 First Chronicles chapter 11 we are talking about the transformed life that he moves you from this level and then he moves you to a higher level he is doing it already we are looking at First Chronicles chapter 11 and we are reading from verse 9 so David's one greater and greater for the Lord of hosts was with him. So David became greater and greater stronger and stronger higher and higher better and better and the Lord will do it for you. Uh, let, let's look at now the, the transformation of in ministry. What look, we have looked at the transformation in life and the transformation now in ministry. We're looking at Galatians chapter 1 reading from verse 21. 
Galatians chapter 1 verse 21 afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ but they had heard only they had heard only those who have not seen you before they will hear your story they will hear something and what they hear will bring up faith greater faith in their hearts in jesus name they had heard only what did they hear it says that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which he once destroyed that's transformation he persecuted the way before he's not preaching it he opposed that thing before he's not supporting it he was destroying people's lives before he is now raising up people's lives that is transformation in ministry transformation in life transformation in ministry it will happen to you and the glorified god in me we will glorify god in you the transformed life three points number one the transformed life of sons of god of the sons of god the transformed life of the sons of god let's look at that number one we're looking at first thessalonians chapter one first thessalonians chapter one that when we come to christ when we hear the gospel and when the power of the grace of god takes hold of us and seizes us you know what it does it transforms our lives it changes our behavior it changes our character the transformed life of the sons of god first thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 for our gospel came not unto you in watch only but also in power and in the holy ghost and in much assurance as she know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes and ye became that's the transformation ye became they became what they were not before something happened a change took place in their lives and it says ye became followers of us and of the lord what a change and what a transformation and i thank god that is what has happened in your life and this transformation that has happened in your life it will be visible to everybody around you in jesus name you became followers of christ and followers of the lord and followers of us having received the word in much affliction with joy of the holy ghost so that ye were examples to all that believe in macedonia and achaia for from you sounded out the word of the lord not only in macedonia and achaia but also in every place your faith to god word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you how ye turned to god from idols to serve the living and the true god it's telling us that they, re they had real transformation of life they were like this before now they became like that they were in darkness before now they came to the light their lives were dirty before now they were clean that same transformation has happened to you and we're glorifying god for you in jesus name in first corinthians chapter 6 first corinthians chapter 6 i read there from verse 9 it says know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor, adul nor adulterers nor the effeminate nor the abusers of themselves with mankind that what that means is those who are abuse the relationship the lord has set up between man and woman because the lord ordained that is for this reason shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife a man and a woman but they change that and you say now they want a man and a man to be together mess up together they want a woman and a woman to be together and mess up together and he said don't you know those people that abuse the relationship like that mankind that they are not going to inherit the kingdom of god and then it says in verse 10 no thieves no covetous no drunkards no revilers no extortioners none of them shall inherit the kingdom of god and then it says and such was some of you 
you are the effeminate you are the homosexuals you are the sodomites and you are the thieves and you are the people that were worshiping idols but he says now he said such were some of you but ye are washed but she are sanctified but she are justified in the name of the lord jesus by the spirit of our god he said a transformation has taken place can you see here that when we're preaching and we're talking to people and then we're telling them about the power of the gospel when the power of the gospel operates and is activated in anybody's life a change takes place you were like this before but now you are clean now you are righteous and now you are pure and I pray that the Lord will fulfill this in every one of our lives in Jesus name it tells us about this in Ephesians chapter 4 I'm reading to you from verse 17 Ephesians chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 17 it says this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that she henceforth walk not as other gentles walk in the vanity of their mind it's saying that now a change should take place a transformation should take place and it says i say if the grace of god has come to you if the power of the cross has become effective in your life and if the righteousness of christ has been imparted and imputed unto you he says henceforth there must be a change there must be a transformation that you will not walk anymore like other gentiles walk having the understanding darkened having been alienated from the life of god and through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk all on cleanness with greediness but ye have not so learnt Christ if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that she put off He's telling us a transformation has taken place a change has taken place and because of that transformation by grace and because of that transformation from guilt to godliness because of that transformation from dirt unto clean unto being clean it says you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws and be renewed in the spirit of your mind what a change what a transformation has taking place it said be renewed in the spirit of your mind the change the transformation the turning around starts from within in the spirit in the attitude in the mind in the heart and because that change has been wrought in the heart then it comes it spills out it comes out it becomes visible it tells us on the next verse there in verse 25 it says wherefore in verse 24 that ye put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness that is a change that is the transformation that takes place now it's not fake holiness it's not just external holiness it's not pretended holiness it's not just a, you know a kind of holiness that you, the kind of holiness of the pharisee i fast twice in the week i go to synagogue i go to temple i'm even better than this public and not that kind of uh, holiness that is uh, bragging about it in what holiness and purity of the heart that is true holiness before the people before the lord then it says in verse 25 wherefore putting away what tell me out loud and you know there are some people that then they say they're born again they say they're children of god and they say lie I don't know that kind of Christianity, a kind of being born again. And you know, they have all kinds of lie and you know, appropriate lie for you know, if it's a little child, they know how to tell a lie to a little that the child will open mouth like this and ah, and the child will think it is true. And some people know how to tell lies to their pastor. The pastor says, Okay, 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 okay. I pray that you walk by the spirit of God. I said, I pray you walk by the spirit of God. Because you know, some of these people they come and they say this and they, and they join everything together and wrap it very well. You say, Is that so? And then the man knows that you are getting the bait and you're getting the hook. And he said, Yes, and then we'll add and add another one. And when they begin to add like that, <laughs> look at their faces very well, their eyes will give them away because they, their countenance will show you that this one is fake and this one is, is a liar. But I pray that God will deliver you in Jesus' name. But thank God, the people who are born again. 
Now the people who are real children of God, there's such a change, there's such a transformation that all the life of lying and deception and hypocrisy of the past, all that is gone in Jesus' name. That's why it says, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of his of of one of one another verse 28 let him that stole the watch still no more but rather let him labor walking with his sons the things which are which is good and then it says that he may have to give to him that needeth and let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth between a man and a woman no corrupt communication no dirty language, no storytelling, nothing that will kind of inspire, engineer, nothing that will arouse any emotion in the woman or in the man that will go to us on cleanness. That's, that's not right. It says, let no corrupt communication, let no defiling communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 31, let all bitterness, let all wrath, and let all anger, and let all clamor, and let all evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another in the heart age forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake tell me has forgiven you because the Lord has forgiven you that same grace that same love that same mercy you show unto all the people that they transformed life of the sons of God a life totally transformed a life totally changed a life that is going now in the right direction every day a new day then you live in that newness of life chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 1 it says in Ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 1 but be ye therefore followers of God as their children as precious children as children that are very close to the Lord, pleasing the Lord, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and has given himself for us, and an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Now, there's a transformation here now from sinner to saint. From sinner to saint. What a transformation. It says now, because you are saints and because you are children of God and you are salt, all the bitterness is gone. All the wrath is gone. All the righteousness is gone. And it says, there will be no fornication. There will be no adultery. Don't let it be once named among you. Then you are becoming, as they become a saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. For this ye you know, that no monger, no clean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater. See this verse again, that a covetous man a covetous woman is an idolater and when we say covetous man or covetous woman we're not just talking about money there's some people that they covet other people's wives they're married then they see another person's wife and you know they say oh why do i have the wife i have why did not have that one that means you are loving your body you are loving your desires more than you love god that's an idol worshiper there, there are women that you know you're a married woman and then you see another married man married man and then you say oh this one is better than my husband why did not i have that one instead of this one that's covetousness it says thou shalt not covet anything when whether it's the wife of your neighbor, the husband of your neighbor, or his money, or his ass, or his servants, or his house, any property, anything belonging to your neighbor, you will not covet. If you covet anything belonging to another person, it means that you're not satisfied with what God has given you. And he says you're an idol worshiper. And he says, don't you know? that no idol worshiper will inherit the kingdom of God. And it says, let no man deceive you. In verse 6, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh 
the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For, your, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now that's the transformation. You were sometimes darkness, you were sometimes evil, you were sometimes sinful, you were sometimes corrupt, you were sometimes in the past covetous, but now the transformation has taken place but now it says ye are light in the lord walk as children of light we're looking at romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 i read here from verse 6 the transformation that takes place the change that takes place when somebody becomes a real believer a real child of god romans chapter 6 verse 6 it says knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth that's the transformation that's the transformation that henceforth from now on we should not serve sin i pray that this transformation everybody will see it in all our lives in jesus name not just transformation for a moment a transformation for a day transformation for a week transformation all through our lives in jesus name it tells us in philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 it's telling us about the change about the transformation that has taken place in the life of every child of god who has the grace of god if this transformation is not there it's an evidence that we do not know the lord it's an evidence that we're not even a member we're not even members of the living church of a bible believing church of the church of the living god how can somebody become a minister in the church when he's not even a member in the church we're looking at a philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 14 do all things without murmuring and disputings that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding forth the watch of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain that is the transformation that has taken place that now we're walking as light the world is crooked the world is dark the world is sinful the world is defiled and yet we have the strength of the lord and the grace of the lord to be able to live a pure life a good life a righteous life it tells us in colossians chapter 3 verse 1 colossians chapter 3 verse 1 if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of god set your affections set your affection on things above not on things on the earth before you are born again you set your affection your love your desire on things on the earth land money business property all the things of the world that's where you set your heart extra moral education studies days that competition with the people of the world they have that i must have it they have this i must have that comparison canal comparison we started together we started the same trade together and he is having this now why am i not having this you set your affections on things on the earth but because of the great transformation and the great change that has taken place it says now you set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth for you are dead and your life is seed with christ in god when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory and to demonstrate that transformation mortify destroy therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanness inordinate affection inordinate affection you know there are some people they don't understand the bible they don't understand the demands of the lord or oh, they say i i didn't commit fornication I didn't commit adultery. I didn't go into the real arch. I don't understand about that because it's talked about inordinate affection. A kind of affection that you misplace. 
the affection and the love and the dis and the attraction that should only be for your husband you misplace that and you put it on a man and then you're looking at the man although you're not doing anything in the physical but in the you know in your mind emotionally the way you think and the way you feel and then the way you kind of stir yourself up you're looking at the man as if you know if i could have him he's a married man and then you're not saying all that you are is affection that is inordinate it's not in order it's not proper and sometimes it's a man that you know he has already whether you are married or not and then you're looking at a woman as if you know if if the chances were there if the doors were closed and if nobody would have known if there would be no church discipline you would have done that evil thing although you didn't do it because there was no chance and yet a saying inordinate affection and when a life is transformed and a life is changed and the blood of jesus washes you and cleanses you and things are different now it says you'll multiply you'll destroy the fornication the uncleanness the inordinate affection the evil concupiscence and covetousness again which is what everyone is telling us that covetousness love of money is idol worship that you're worshiping money and, and you, you know many people nowadays even if they go to church it's because of prosperity they want more they want more they want more and their preachers are encouraging them to go into loving this money and they can do anything they, they name the name of christ they call the name of christ and they say they go to church but idolatry love of money has eaten the very fabric of the christian profession and he's saying over here that that covetousness is idolatry and you know what even we as a church we have to be very careful and sometimes you know as we come to a congress like this and we make announcement that what we came here for we came here to hear the word of the lord and to prepare the servants of the most high to be well equipped to go and reach out in salvation and to give the word of life unto the people of the world and then while we're preaching over here there are some people selling things over there yes i understand they are christian books Yes, I understand. They even deprive materials. And while we are saying, come on here and come and hear the word of God, and then we'll say, and our shares are telling the people, they have started already. Then the people who are selling, the season, yes, this one is this price. This one is this price. What's that? Is that not love of money? That now we exalt selling our materials when the messages are going on and when the meetings already here and we're already selling over here and we're calling them and calling some of us are even hearing we're hearing the sound of the message and we're still there and delaying the people there because at the end of the day we want to be able to compare that we were from this section group a group b group c and group d and we put all our books and all our tapes and everything here and then group a how much did you get Group B, how much did you get? And group C, how much did you get? Because of that comparison, I want to get more than group A. I want to get more than group C. Because of that love of money. Business. We will not be able to allow people to hear the word of God. And it says covetousness is idolatry. That covetousness can be out there in the market. That covetousness can be over here. But this is the amount of transfiguration. And the Lord will transform our lives in Jesus' name. And when that transformation has taken place, covetousness is gone in Jesus' name. And then anything we do is not because of money. Anything we sell is not because we want to have more money than that other side. Anything we're doing, it will be because we love the Lord and then we do the appropriate thing at the right time. I pray the Lord will convince us and convict us of the right thing in Jesus' name. It says, For which things sake, in verse 6, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime past when ye lived in them, but said, But now that's the transformation it transformed life they transformed life of sons of god but now also he also put off all these anger 
wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Let not lie not to one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And then it says, and I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. They transformed life. When you become a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, this is the change and this is the transformation that takes place in your life. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 verse 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God. He said a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world did you hear that i said did you hear that tell me if you heard i mean tell me what i said what did you hear tell me again and be not conformed unto this world uh, you, you know this our church deeper life god bless deeper life everybody say god bless deeper life uh, but but you know when you know the thing i've been trying to pass across that you didn't get that be not conformed to this world our people they think that if our women don't use their ring if our women don't call their ear if our women if they wear you know these uh, beautiful dresses they have they say we are not conformed to the world and I'm saying that is the elementary understanding of the word of God that's okay but it's elementary be not conformed to this world what it means really do not allow the practice of the world the philosophy of the world and all the politics of the world don't let it come into your life you know this is this group this is that group in the same church this is another group in the same church and then this group is in competition with this group this group is in competition with this group and then at the end of the day there's this comparison who is more important that's the world that's, that means this group has become a party that second group has gone another party in the same church that second other group has gone another party and we're saying which party is going to give us a consensus candidate and then as we you know come together here who is going to be here who is going to be there that's the world and the lord is saying that in this transformation of life be not conformed in, unto the world and you know sometimes we're making comparison and we're saying you know they're bringing somebody used to be our state overseer and that we're saying this state overseer and then we're comparing him with the other state overseer who was there before and then we're saying why did they bring this one here why did they give us a state of ourselves like this? And then we're saying, and by the way, our own people, they're there. And they didn't put our own people, and they just bring this person from another, another tribe. Hey, let me ask you, was Philip a Samaritan? But he went to Samaria. There was a mighty revival. And then when that mighty revival came, they then said that Peter and John should go over there and strengthen them. Don't you remember John? John and James, they were the people. When Jesus was to pass through Samaria and the Samaritans did not allow him. And they said because his face was like going to Jerusalem. They said, you will not pass through Samaria to go to Jerusalem. And James and who? John. They said, Jesus Lord permit us will call down fire to come on and burn them up like Elijah did and they same John now when the revival broke out they said Peter and John John go and see the people you wanted to burn up and see how they are doing and then they got there did the Samaritans say this one we don't accept this one did they say that why is this worldliness coming in 
the carnality coming in that now we don't want that one we don't want that one and you know sometimes they, they write all these letters and, and they do it like the people of the world they write anonymous letters anonymous letters and then they said it's not good it's not good I ever say it's not good this one is not good that, and we say what is the thing that is not good there what's he doing because you know he, he favors this one he doesn't favor and by the time you look at it the thing is so shallow it's so empty doesn't have any root and the lord is saying be not conformed unto this world we're not going to be conformed to the world and then you know you, you understand what you know the people of the world what they do and you know that the people of the world in, in the government when when some people are let's say the government is uh, having a particular policy and they say that they say the thing to do and then the it may be the uh, you know the national labor congress that will say that one we don't agree and then they'll say government change that and we'll give you ultimatum and if you don't change that in two weeks we're going to tell everybody drop everything you are doing and then sometimes it's the medical doctors and people are dying and then their head will just say because we are telling the government that this is what to do and the government is not forget about people living or dying all you doctors stop the work you are doing and the doctors will stop and then generators not working this one is not working and the people who are on life support they just die off and then but the government is saying people are dying this is your profession you are the people help these people they say what we told you give us if you don't give us finish let all the people die and then that's the world we come to the church and then we're trying to correct something we say now put this right and then we do we take an action and then there's another group over here that their services they're not going to render whether people are dying physically spiritually or not they are not going to render their service they say what we are telling you is this church will be ungovernable except you follow this that policy reading bible you read bible too much we know you know bible but you don't know people we know people we don't know bible therefore change this thing if you don't change it and then listen to us instead of listening to God we're going to make the church ungovernable for you that's the world that's how they do it in the world and he's saying we should not be conformed unto this world forget about not wearing jewelry forget about all the dummy dresses we're wearing all those dresses they're all right i'm not saying i'm not knocking that i'm saying it's the elementary understanding of the word of god that the word of god says all those practices and philosophies of the world get rid of that and let us be poured from inside to outside so that the church of the living god will not bring in any politics of the world into the church in jesus name read that verse again and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god point number two the transgressing laborers and strangers against god the transgressing laborers and strangers against god you see when the lord is talking about transformation he wants transformation everywhere and he wants tra that transformation through and through within and then in the work we're doing but there are people they are laborers they're leaders they're strange but they become strangers to the commonwealth of israel let's look at the Leviticus chapter 10 verses 1 and 2 Leviticus chapter 10 I'm reading verses 1 and 2. Leviticus 10, verses 1 and 2. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them a censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not which he commanded them not you see over here these were laborers but they came strangers strangers in the service of the lord they abandoned the commandment of the lord and the thing that he did not command that's what they offered it says in verse 2 and there went out fire from the lord and devouched them and they died before the lord i pray you will live 
in Jeremiah chapter 23 transgressing laborers laborers and leaders who transgress who will not follow after the will and the word of the Lord Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 21 Jeremiah 23 we're looking at it from verse 21 I have not sent them these prophets yet they ran I have not spoken to them yet they prophesied can you imagine that the people who have not heard from God and then they are saying thus says the Lord I have not spoken to them I have not sent them and yet they are speaking and prophesying in verse 22 but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words then should they have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings if they had listened to me and they have really represented me they would have turned the people away from their transgression but if you just you know just talk to them and just befriend them and you know, just smile with them and then they come in and they're not walking in the ways of the lord it says if you're a real child of god and if you're a real minister of the lord a prophet a pastor a preacher a proclaimer of the truth of the lord you will turn people away from their evil ways and from their transgression and if you are not doing that you say so one of those strangers the lord has not sent you verse 32 in verse 32 behold i am against them that prophesy false dreams says the lord and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness yet i sent them not nor commanded them therefore they shall not profit this people at all says the lord if we allow people whom god has not sent and you'll know them by their fruits by their fruits you'll know them by their action you'll know them by their ministerial style you will know them if you are not people that god has not said it says they shall not profit these people at all if we're going to have spiritual profit if you're going to have growth in our church it will should allow only the people that god has sent to speak the word unto us and it is that that will bring spiritual profit and will bring numerical profit unto us look at that in verse 36 is saying and the body of the lord shall ye mention no more for every man's word shall be his body for ye have perverted the words of the of the living god of the lord of hosts our god they pervert the word they are transgressing laborers and they are strangers against the lord jeremiah chapter 28 verse 15 jeremiah chapter 28 we're looking at verse 15 here is what he's telling us there about the people that you know they're trying to preach and they're trying to bring some strange doctrine and some strange dogma and they, they cannot profit the church or profit any ministry at all jeremiah chapter 28 verse 15 it says then said the prophet jeremiah unto ananiah the prophet here now ananiah the lord has not sent thee but thou makest these people to trust in a lie to trust in a lie to believe to a false hope and it says well the sort of people will not profit us i pray that you will not be listening to them i pray that you will not appoint them if you mistakenly appoint them i pray that you will you know reverse it i pray god will help us in jesus name i say god will help us in jesus name we're looking at Malachi chapter 2 from verse 5. Malachi chapter 2, we're reading from verse 5. The transgressing laborers. Replace them. Change them. Remove them. Transgressing laborers. Strangers against God. Malachi chapter 2, I read from verse 5. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 5, my covenant was with him of life and peace. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me. I was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth. And iniquity was not found in his leaves. He walked with me in peace and equity. And did, did turn many away from iniquity. That's the right thing we should do. But now it says in past tense. He did that in the past. He transformed people by his preaching, by his messages long ago. But now it says things are different. It says in verse 7 For the priest lives, should keep knowledge. 
and they shall seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the lord of hosts but ye have departed out of the way these people they became transgressing laborers and strangers in the ministry in the work of the lord the truth they held on to before they had dropped that and their commitment to the veracity of the word of god all that they had dropped all that came now is just story and history and you know some things that are not really true all the dreams and whatever it is they say but ye have departed out of the way ye have caused many to stumble at the law these were the same people that turned many unto righteousness in verse 6 but now in, in this verse is saying that they have now made other people many people to depart from the way of the Lord they have corrupt ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi says the Lord of hosts therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people according as ye have not cared my ways but have been partial in the law partial in the law partial in the lord they hold on to a little they drop other parts they hold on to some they drop another thing they're no more holding on to the totality of the word of god and it says they have been partial in the word in the law of the lord and the lord is telling us not to be like that we are not going to be like that we're going to hold on to the touch of word of God and as we do that the Lord himself is going to keep on changing lives and transforming lives and converting people through you and through me and through us together in Jesus name we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 23 verse 15 Matthew chapter 23 verse 15 warn to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte and when he is made ye make him to fold more child of hell than yourselves it says that these people they try to do evangelism in their own way and they run up and down to grab this and grab that and bring them to their assembly bring them to their synagogue or bring them to their temple and bring them under their tutelage under their discipleship program and when they are finished with those people they make them to fold children of hell and themselves and the lord is telling us it's not just evangelism it's not just discipleship what are we telling them are we telling them to repent are we telling them to yield their lives their totality unto the lord are we telling them to turn away from every evil in their lives are we making them to trust in the grace of god in the strength of the lord that turns them around and then become new creatures in christ or are we just you know bringing them come to our church come to our church come to our church and when they have come to our church they are worse than what they were before the lord is saying what is sending us out to do is to have such an impact in the lives of the people that their lives will change and the grace of god will come in their lives and things will be totally different it's going to be like that in jesus name but you know for these pharisees they just go up and down go up and down and then confuse people convince people and just keep them and maybe they even make them prisoners and they make them slaves slaves of their dogma and slaves of their religious or whatever opinion they have that's what the lord is saying now the judgment will be upon them look at verse 33 you serpents you generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell uh, let's look at um, acts of the apostles chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 28 to verse 31 acts of the apostles we're looking at chapter 20 the transgressing laborers they labor but they transgress they preach, but they transgress. They sacrifice, but they transgress. They give time and everything, but all the time they give, it just to destroy the fold and the flock by their false doctrine, by their false lives. It says in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Take heed to yourselves, unto yourselves, and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Verse 29, for I know this, for I know this, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away what 
Tell me out loud. Disciples after them. If stealing money is wrong, if stealing money is sinful, if stealing money is going to incur the judgment of God, stealing converted souls from Christ. They should be disciples of Christ, but they steal their hearts like Absalom. And they steal their hearts to draw disciples after them. You think of the wickedness of that. That other people labored. And those people were born again. Those people made their commitment unto the Lord. And those people, when we labored, when we preached, and when we prayed, when we fasted, all that we did, that we had to do. And then the people became converted, and they came to the Lord. And even we that got used, we didn't try to make them subservient to us. We said, we want you to Christ, you belong to Christ, your consecration, your submission, your surrender. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. We pointed them to Christ. The people we want to Christ, we then said, you be a leader here, you be a leader there, you be a leader there. And those same people, they're not your converse. We want them to the Lord. And then you're trying to instigate them, influence them, and draw them, and bribe them, and make them subservient to you instead of being surrendered to Christ to draw disciples after them and think of the guilt and the condemnation of such people. And Paul the Apostle said, I know, I know that after my departure, that some will rise up even people among you and they'll try to draw disciples after themselves and it says therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years i not they i god use me not they i cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified i pray that we're listening to this and the blessing of obedience will be for us in jesus name uh, you know it's, it's like a mother carried a child for those nine months the pain and you, you know the deprivation and the suffering and everything that that woman went through and eventually the child was delivered and now the mother is taking care of the child and there's another woman on the other in a neighboring house and that whenever the mother is not i mean the real mother is not around that other person will come and say hey children uh, what do you get this biscuit biscuit compared with nine months of suffering carrying that baby get this biscuit and then you know and the mother will come give breakfast and give a lunch and give supper and compare the breakfast and the lunch and the with biscuit and then another day again the woman that other neighboring house the woman will come and say child get biscuit i love you more than your mother and children what do children do children know nothing and eventually because of biscuit because of sweet because of tom tom whatever they, they you know bribe those children and then eventually uh, the child is going away and is going and when mother is coming from the office or coming from the market the child is appearing that she doesn't even know the mother exists or just say uh, look away about when the other woman is coming the, this child will go and embrace and say mommy mommy who is mommy the one that carried you for nine months is not mommy and the one that, uh, that paid your school fees is not mommy and the one that taught you everything that you know is not mommy and the stranger because of biscuit and that is the world that is coming to the church and we leaders who labored we evangelists who labored we're not known anymore we're not appreciated anymore and the one that gave biscuit and you know five uh, naira a kind of biscuit or sweet that's the one that is now recognized and then they draw disciples away after them and they draw them away from christ and the consecration and dedication that we emphasize and we put there before we say help these people before we said that now you turn them away with ordinary biscuit if god is going to judge that woman 
that influenced other people's children and drew them into another society with biscuit. Think of the judgment God is going to bring upon the people that draw disciples after themselves. I pray God will deliver us in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Third John, Third John, and I'm reading there from verse 9. Third John, we're looking at verse 9. It says, I wrote unto the church. But Diotrephes, who loveth to have preeminence among them, receiveth us not. I wrote to the church. Here is John, John the beloved. And this Diotrephes, we don't know him. Who knows him? It's John that we know. He was the one that followed Jesus Christ in all his temptation and trial. And the Lord said, I'm going to give you this reward. And this John, appointed by the Lord, he wrote to the church. And then he said, Diotrephes, who loveth to have preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will tell, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, preaching against us with malicious words no and not content therewith neither does he himself receive the brethren but and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church beloved follow not that which is evil but that which is good he that doeth good is of god he that doeth evil tell me has not seen god we're looking at point number three the transparent leadership of servants of god the transparent leadership of servants of god if we're servants of god our lives must be transparent our leadership must be transparent and the style of our laboring must be transparent there's no secret deal between any man and any woman don't tell your overseer this they just between me and you don't tell your husband it's just between me and you that's not transparent that's shady that's evil if we're going to be leaders who are accepted by the lord leaders appointed by the lord and leaders who are going to be rewarded eventually we must live a transparent life and then not only that our ministry must be transparent that's what we'll see in the word of god we're looking at uh, first uh, second corinthians chapter 2 second corinthians chapter 2 your interpretation of the word your delivery of the word your preaching of the word must be transparent in second corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 for we are not as many which corrupt the word of god but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. So we're not as many that speak in dark language, coded language. We we'll make it plain, make it sincere, make it real. And it says that is the life to live, and that is how to labor, and that is how. To serve the Lord and not to lead the people of chapter 4, verse 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness and handling the word of God deceitfully, but by, manifest, by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Transparency, transparency as we minister. As we live our lives and what we're going to do we do that transparently and the lord is telling us in first thessalonians chapter 2 first thessalonians chapter 2 reading from verse 4 but as we were allowed of god to be put in trust with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men to avoid persecution there are people that they speak they know the truth but they won't speak the truth they want to please men because if they told the truth they knew 
if they preached the truth they knew they're afraid of persecution and afraid that they will lose face with people they lose the you know friendship of people they're looking for friendship rather than for salvation of souls they're looking for friendship rather than the glory of god but here paul the apostle said will speak not as pleasing men but god which tries our hearts for neither at any time used we flattering words as you know nor a cloak of covetous God is witness, not nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Verse 10, ye are witnesses and God also, transparent life, transparent leadership. What we do, we're able to tell other people, and if anybody des you know, deserves a reason, we'll tell them the reason. I'm doing this because of this. I'm doing this because of this. I send you here because of this. I take you out of that place because of this. We're able to tell them. That's transparency. But you know when you cover it up, when you have another ulterior motive, and then you show something else that's not of God. It says, ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily, and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe i pray that show will be like that i said you'll be like that no secrecy and you know, the secret thing that we're carrying on and you know after you hear the message and now you run to that lady and i i hope you didn't tell your husband that thing that happened i hope you didn't tell uh, your overseer you know that thing that happened you know, you know, we don't need all that why should they tell let them tell if it's a good thing they ought to tell i said they ought to tell you know jesus said what i told you in the secret go and go to the house top and go and say it but when we have to don't say don't say don't say there's something wrong going on in that place i pray that god will make our lives our ministries will make us transparent in jesus name in john john chapter 18 verses 19 to 21 john chapter 18 in it from verse 19 the high priest then asked jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine and jesus answered him i spoke openly to the world i ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whither the jews always resorted in secret have i said nothing think about that he said i'm transparent everybody heard me you can ask them verse 21 why askest thou me ask them which heard me what i have said unto them behold they know what i said we should be as transparent as the lord jesus christ and i pray this same change the lord will bring upon our lives in jesus name our lives will be transformed our ministries will be transformed and everything we do will be transformed and then be a source of transformation unto other people in jesus name in second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 again second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all with open face open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord the lord will do it he'll change us and transform us our lives personal lives our lives family lives our lives professional lives our lives ministry and life everything as we're looking unto the lord jesus christ even this moment everything will be totally transformed in jesus name are you ready let's rise up and tell the lord the transformed life the transformed family the transformed profession the transformed behavior the transformed ministerial service let the lord do that in our lives talk to the lord in prayer and say lord here am i lord here am i lord here am i make the necessary change and transformation i want to go higher and higher i want to go stronger and stronger i want to be brighter and brighter i want to be fresher and fresher let the lord do it in your life and be a help to other people a help to other people open your mouth and pray unto the lord and say lord i want to have this transformed life i want to to have this changed life i want to have this change in my life the lord will do it the lord will do it open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer the lord will do it it's in the process a wonderful project 
of making us a kind of man we ought to be and a kind of minister we ought to be we need that change the strength of last year will not be able to carry the burden of this year and the attitude of years before will not be able to plow through and go through all the challenges of the future new life new strength new power new ability new courage new outpouring of the holy ghost upon our lives transformed transformed from grace to grace from glory to glory from one level of holiness to a higher level of holiness tell him to do it yes he knows yes he knows he knows your need he will he will he is able he is able able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us able 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 to do able to accomplish all that we ask or think abundantly able to do exceedingly above even all that can make that change break every yoke can destroy the works of the devil make a new man a renewed minister make the fire to burn hot upon the altar altar of your soul of your spirit commit yourself to the Lord let him make the change we need you to become another Elijah today prophet of fire prophet of power the world is waiting for you the Lord is waiting for you the church is waiting for you let him change you let him transform you let him make you stronger we don't want you weak we want you strong you'll be more of a blessing to us in the church you'll be more of a blessing to the world if you are stronger if you are more courageous if you are more fervent you'll be more useful and we need your usefulness become stronger become greater become more fiery become more committed become more loyal become more faithful and move on from faith to faith from grace to grace from glory to glory from strength to strength and the spirit of the Lord will do that will accomplish that in your life and this year will be a year of laboring appropriately doing greater things and better things and you've been reaching the lives of people and the church will become the better the greater the stronger because you have become greater stronger better more enriched in the things of the lord a new day a new dawn a new revelation a new future